Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of the John Morris Show. So this comes from a question that I saw over on Quora. I haven't actually answered it over there yet, but I'm going to. But I saw it and it, I'll be honest, it sort of got my, ruffled my feathers a little bit. And so I wanted to dive into answering it. But the question is, if I want to be a professional PHP developer, then how many PHP functions do I need to know and memorize. So what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to tell you the exact number and the exact functions in PHP that you need to memorize in order to become a professional PHP developer. So pretty simple prospect. That's what's coming up in the episode. Of course, before I get into that, I do want to again remind you of Udemy's ongoing deal right now. Now, this is an affiliate exclusive only deal. So if you go to the site, you're not going to just see the deal on there. You do have to go through an affiliate link. I happen to be an affiliate. So if you use the link johnmorrisonline.com slash March, you will be able to get all of their participating courses for just $11.99. Now, I want to clear up a couple things about this from the past few episodes. The original information I got said it was going to be 10.99 and and so that's why I put that on there and then there were I was having there was some trouble people were having trouble with the links and I had contacted you to me and so forth. Anyway, all of that got worked out but uh as it stands right now the deal is actually 11.99 not 10.99. So still a pretty good deal. So if you're looking to get a Udemy course and looking for a coupon code again, you can use johnmorrisonline.com slash March. Or if you're just looking to get some some training going and and want to have some skills that you want to learn, Udemy is a great place to do that. There's a ton ton of courses over there for you to learn from. So again, johnmorrisonline.com slash March in order to to trigger that deal. All right. So with that out of the way, let's answer this question. How many PHP functions do I need to know and memorize? And the answer is zero. And the functions you need to memorize are none. And I don't mean that in the sense of there's none that you have to, like you don't have to memorize. What I mean is the amount of time that you should spend memorizing PHP functions, worrying about memorizing PHP functions, wondering about it, thinking about it, any of that, the exact amount of time that you should spend doing that is zero. There's not a single PHP function that you should go out there and sit down specifically to memorize it. That is is pointless. It's futile. It's not going to make you a professional PHP developer. And the reality of it is is that when you work with PHP uh, and you know you do it on a regular basis, you are going to naturally memorize the things that you use most often anyway. So you don't need to spend time memorizing those things. And the things that you don't naturally memorize, you're not using often enough for you to have to memorize them. So it's either way, it's pointless to sit down and try and use and and memorize PHP function. It serves no purpose. And beyond that, again, it's not going to make you a better developer. That is not what makes you a good developer. Okay. I, I have, I can say I've never sat down to memorize a PHP function. I look up stuff all the time, even WordPress, which is probably what I know best, even better than PHP, I look up common, simple stuff all of the time. And every developer that I've ever talked to, it's the same thing. Now, yeah, you have certain things that you're going to memorize. For me, for example, Sprint F, I use that all the time in, in my code. I know what that function, I have it memorized. I know the format, the parameters, all that. So, that's something I have memorized, but I never sat down to actually memorize it. I just use it so much that I naturally memorized it. And that's the way it works. So again, you shouldn't spend any time worrying about this, any time thinking about this, any time trying to do this. There are far more important things to be worried about to be a professional PHP developer than memorizing functions. And and so with that said, while I have you here, let me talk a little bit about the things I think you should do in order to be a professional PHP developer. The things that I think you should think about and worry about that are more, far more important than memorization. So the first one is object modeling. And I use this in sort of a broad sense. 
So what I mean by that is being able to break down when you want to build an application, being able to sit down and break that down by the objects that are going to be in it. And yes, this is the basis for object oriented programming. But if you're going to build a professional level application, that's what you need to be doing. And so being able to look at a, a potential application and be able to lay it out and break it out by objects is really the first important step that you need to take. And the way that I would talk about this sort of to, to give you the, the, the purpose or, or the, the reason why you want to break your applications uh, down like this is it, it deals with the way that we sort of naturally think anyway. So if you just kind of take a step back, forget about code for a second, and you just look at the world around you, you will see that you see that world in objects. So you see a table, you see a couch, you see a chair, a refrigerator, a stove. You see the world as objects. And for each one of those objects, there's a lot of sort of ancillary data that goes with it, like its purpose, its function, how it works, et cetera, et cetera, all the characteristics of color and so forth. And so the way that we look at the world is an object-oriented way. We see individual objects that have individual functions and purposes, and they interact with each other in certain ways. So if you took, say, for example, a soccer ball, you would have, let's say, a human being and a soccer ball are two distinct objects, but they can interact with each other in certain ways. So the the human could kick the soccer ball, they could dribble, they could pass, they could you know hit it with their head, all sorts of different interactions that those two objects can have together. Well, when you're building applications, you are actually explicitly laying this out. And, and that's how you build your application. And the thing about this is, because this is how we see the world and, and why object-oriented programming is so powerful is because this is our natural way of, of looking at things. Uh, and it's our brain that does it, right? Our, our eyes are mainly just receptors. There's like, I think it's something like millions, maybe even billions of light waves that hit our eyeballs every second. So if we were to see the world how our eyeballs see it, it would be sort of just like a blitz of, of data. It's our brain that takes that data and interprets it and allows us to see individual objects. So the point is our brain is already really good at doing this. So when you engage in object-oriented programming, you're engaging in a kind of programming that fits more naturally with how you already see the world. So learning how to do that and, and being able to explicitly sit down and, and, and do that for an application you want to build, far more important than being able to memorize PHP functions. So that's one thing you could be doing instead. Another is following on from breaking objects down by or applications down by objects. Again, thinking of professional being a professional PHP developer. The next thing you sort of got to do is start to look at your database structure because this application, you know, you're breaking down by objects, but now you're going to have to be able to store data about those objects. And I've talked a lot about before about the three table types, the, 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 not necessarily the only table types, but sort of the, the most common ones for creating an application that is scalable, flexible, uh, can be upgraded easily, so forth. And so those three table types are objects table, an objects meta table, and an objects relationships table. So the idea is that when you have an object, let's take a CMS, for example, you have a post that is a, a kind of object, you're going to store records. So you're going to store individual object instances in your database. So you're going to need an objects table to store that data. So row one will be post number one, that's an individual object instance row two, row three, row four. So you need to store all of that data and certain data about that object is going to be uh, required is maybe not a, the, the perfect word, but it's going to be very vital to that object. So for example, the title of a post, sure, you could go without the title of a post, but it's not really a post unless it has a title or the actual content. Again, you could not have content, but it's not really a post unless it has content, etc. So there's certain data that is 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 sort of required for it to actually be an object. That all that data goes in your objects table. 
Then you have certain data that is sort of more optional or miscellaneous. It could be added to a particular post or not. So the example that I I often use is uh, with WordPress, you have the Yoast SEO plugin. And one of the things that that plugin adds is a meta box on your edit screen to be able to put in a focus keyword. And that then allows uh, the, the plugin to analyze your post and tell you things you can do to make it more SEO friendly. Now that's really handy and, 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 and uh, powerful for increasing, you know, your SEO, but it's not required for it to be a post. It's something extra that's helping you in some different way. That is more the metadata range or the metadata uh, area. And so you would have a table where you can specify this sort of data. And then the last one is a relationships table. So we talk about how objects interact with each other. Well, you need to have a way to, to, to be able to track those relationships. So for example, if you have a post, you also have another object called a category. You need to be able to put the object into the category. And you could do that, you could specify that in the objects table or even maybe the meta table, but a relationships table makes it a lot more flexible because then you can have objects belonging to multiple different categories, you can have a bunch of different categories and so forth. And so you basically, you, you need a table that allows you to tie two, uh, two objects together in some way. So those are the three table types and that's sort of like a quick and dirty on database structure. But digging into that and understanding that, again, far more important than memorizing PHP functions. A last one I'll give you here. So design patterns. You probably have heard a little bit about this lately. Not that long ago, it really wasn't that big of a topic. Topic, But now with sort of the, the rise of MVC, it's become a, a lot more popular topic. And of course, MVC, I would say, is probably the most well-known common design pattern that people hear about out there. But it's certainly not the only one. And in my opinion, I actually, there's a design pattern that I prefer uh, prefer to MVC. And I actually learned this from my mentor. So uh, my men one of my mentors is, he's the lead developer for the company that I that is my main client. And their, their flagship product is a WordPress plugin. Well, uh, they, at one point, they the, the, the way their system works, they have some comp complicated... Uh, customer sort of of management that they need to do, and they tie certain things into Infusionsoft and so forth. So anyway, it became apparent at one point they needed to create an application that that uh, sort of a standalone application that handled their their customer management. And when and he was the one that built that. And when he built it, he built it using this other design pattern. And when I went in and looked at the code, I was like, hmm, I've never seen this before. And I, I sort of started asking. Him questions about it and he explained it to me and it made a lot of sense and it's to me it sort of makes a little bit more sense it, it, to me it fits more naturally with how when I think about applications how I would want to build them and it's not it's it's similar to MVC but it's not quite exactly MVC so uh, anyway that you know again design patterns whatever they are whether it's MVC something else digging into those and learning those far more important than memorizing PHP functions. So that's sort of three different things that you could be doing to, to actually become a professional PHP developer over wasting your time memorizing uh, functions or, or, or any of that stuff. So, uh, you know, take that for what it's worth. Now, I'll, I'll be upfront with you. I'm being, a little, I'm being a little sneaky here because the three things that I mentioned I do believe that these things are probably three of the most important things that you could learn in order to make that leap to professional developer. They also happen to be three things, three of the big things that I teach you inside of my object-oriented programming course. And so if you're, again, wanting to learn and make that leap to creating professional applications, these are three of the things that you really need to dig in and learn. And my object-oriented programming course is going to teach you how to do that. So if you want to learn more about that course, you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash OOP. That will, will take you to the sort of the info page. There's Skillshare links, there's Udemy links, or you can buy it standalone uh, on my site. If you do buy it standalone on my site, you can also use the coupon code JMO at checkout for twenty an additional 20% off of the course. So 
Uh, highly recommend that if you're you're wanting to make that leap into professional development, becoming a P professional PHP developer. But regardless of what you do, don't waste any time. Don't spend any time memorizing PHP functions. You will naturally memorize the ones that you need to, and the ones that you don't, you can very easily look up. So it, it really is pointless, in my opinion, to spend any time doing that. All right, that'll do it for the episode. If you liked the episode, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, so you can get all future episodes. Also with that, I guess subscribing now isn't enough, so make sure when you subscribe, you also hit the little bell icon so you, you get a notification that the video is posted. Uh, YouTube doing some of its its fun stuff. So just be sure to do both those if you do, just do subscribe. Also, past episodes uh, and links to subscribe on Android, iTunes, tune in for the audio-only version of the podcast. You can find all that at johnmorrisshow.com. And finally, if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I'd really appreciate that. I will also give you Module 1 of my PHP 101 course for free for leaving me an honest review over there. So all the instructions for that are at johnmorrisshow.com. Just click on the Start Here link at the top. All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.